Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I am so excited that the colubrid breeding season is upon us and we're gonna start feeding and putting snakes together literally within the next couple days. And you know, I've been doing this a long time. You guys know this. I think this is my 34th breeding season. So every year crazy stuff happens, you know, and you gotta wonder, you know, what's gonna happen this year? I mean, what kind of crazy things are gonna come up with our breeding season this year? Cause every single year some insane thing happens. You might remember this one. It was crazy when this female Colombian rainbow boa literally had a mummified baby stuck in her. And this is the weird thing. It appears that maybe she hung on to a baby last year. And can you see that right there? That is crazy. Look at the pattern. You can literally see it's a little baby snake. Now what I think happened is I literally think that she retained a baby from last year and she's been keeping it in her the entire year. And of course, now that she's full of fresh new babies, she's kind of pushing it out. So we're gonna do our absolute best to see if there's a way we can try to get this out really gently. Ah, oh, let's see. Oh my gosh, that is so weird. That is literally a baby snake from last year. Look at this, oh, that, oh, that is so bizarre. Oh, do you see that? Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, this is crazy, oh, there it is. Oh, guys, that is the craziest thing ever. This snake was literally in there like a mummified baby from last year. That is crazy. And of course she was blocked up with that. So thank God we got it out of her. So now she can actually have her fresh babies from this year. That is crazy. That's the first time I've ever seen that happen with a snake like this. I mean, how freaking insane is that? Again, after all these years of doing it, this is the first time I've ever extracted a mummified baby snake from the year before. <sighs> That's crazy. That was something that in all the years I've been doing snakes, I had never seen. And strangely enough, this female Kenyan sand boa here had something similar happen. It wasn't from a year before mummified, but she did have a baby stuck in her. And we had to do a little bit of thinking to get it out of her. Just coming down, checking on the sand boas. Mary said that there was a disaster litter of sand boas. Oh, I don't even want to take a look. Oh my gosh, this is horrible. Look at their, oh, they're fully formed, perfect. Wait, what, what has she got going on here? What has she got going on? Oh, there's something actually stuck. I'm gonna go ahead and pick her up because it looks like she's got a baby actually stuck inside of her right here. Take a look at that. That is absolutely crazy. I'm just gonna gently pull this out. Ah, oh, gosh, that is so, oh my gosh. I'm gonna try to get it out. It's literally stuck in there. Oh my gosh. Come on, girl. What is going on? Okay, I got, okay. It seems like something is going on. I don't know what is up with this. This is bizarre. It's actually, I think it's actually an, a ripped oviduct is what it is. You can see it's on both sides where there's actually like a tear in the oviduct. So what I'm gonna try to do is just really gently squeeze this through and hopefully get this all, ah, oh, there it is. I got it out, there it is. It looks like she's completely done when it comes to any other babies. This was the last baby, but boy, what a disaster clutch. What I think happened probably is this baby probably got stuck and then all the other babies probably died because they were suffocated because they need to be born. And this was the one that somehow got kind of twisted up in the oviduct. Regardless, let's see if there's anything going on in here. It looks like obviously we had that one bad baby. We have two, three, four bad babies all together. So that's not good at all. It's like, no one communicates. People just walk out and then we don't know where anyone goes. Where'd they go? We opened up the door and waved to her as she was pulling out and she went, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know where Lori is half the time. Yeah, so it's sad. I, I don't know who owns this place, but we got to get some better business stuff going here. Mike, Mike, I <laughs> and of course, when you produce the amount of animals that we do in the course of a year, you're going to have mutants, right? You're going to have things that are just like, what in the world were they thinking? And that's just a numbers game, right? I mean, if you do thousands of babies, you're going to have deformities. And there was a snake that was similar genetically to this that hatched out that was unbelievably freaky. But of course, the creme de la creme of this fudge was the only Super Lori, which is Super Lori pin. But I tell you what, guys, sometimes this happens with genetics. I am so bummed out about this. 
Look at the deformity on the nose right there, guys. That's right, it was born deformed, and it happens with all kinds of different mutations. You can have it with albinos, you can have it with pies, you can have it with cinnamon. It's not that this deformity is linked to the Lori gene, it's just that sometimes, genetically, you just end up having a deformity, and I am so bummed. Now, what will happen to this ball plankton? I'm not sure. I'm not gonna euthanize it. I'm gonna set it up, I'm gonna let it shed, I'm gonna do the best. It may eat and do completely fine. If it does, then I'll probably just rehome it as a pet to somebody, or maybe even keep it myself as a pet. I mean, it's kind of cute. It's got that little bulbous nose thing, but I am so bummed because this was the animal that was the best animal as far as genetically in the clutch, but this is part of it, guys. I've told you, I am gonna take you on the journey, the good, the bad, the ugly. This happens to everyone. Not everyone shares it, but I'm gonna share it because if you ever breed snakes, you're going to have this happen, and it is deflating. I'm not gonna lie. I was so excited about this ball python, but hey, listen, hopefully it still thrives and does good, and it'll make a good pet down the road. You guys know that it's Bella merch time, and it is really comfortable it looks great I am so happy that you guys convinced me to bring it back but it's only gonna be back for a very limited time so a link is in the description if you want to pick up your Bella shirts your your hoodies or different colors like this green or oh, oh my gosh okay so anyways guys really quick down in the description get your Bella merch you can even get a mug if you want so uh, it's only a limited time only she went and got food and didn't even ask anyone and I didn't even get door did get? I don't know I just see her eating I don't know, then when this spotted python laid eggs last year, it was crazy because they weren't completely calcified. It was like windows into the eggs themselves, and you could actually see the babies grow. We called it our science experiment, and it was really cool to see that baby grow from a little tiny, just little dot, basically, all the way to when it hatched. You could see it growing. It was absolutely cool. Weird as heck, but pretty awesome. You could see they're really translucent, so you can actually see the embryo and the network of veins right through the eggs. Sometimes you see that with colubrids, sometimes spotted pythons as well. Look at this egg right here. Wow, that is bizarre. That's almost like a science project. You can literally see inside the egg. You can see all the veins. It's just a lack of calcium. For whatever reason, these eggs weren't calcified as much as some other eggs where you can't actually see them. But uh, why she didn't wrap them, I have no clue. But I'm gonna set these all up. It looks like there's a pretty good amount of eggs in here too. Look at that. You can literally see the embryo in the egg itself. See right there, you can see the little black dot is actually the eye of the snake right there. That is weird. Will this embryo go the whole distance? I don't know, but that might be something to kind of keep an eye on, and we can actually see that snake grow in the egg itself. That is really cool, something that you hardly ever see. But I'm gonna be honest with you, oftentimes when that happens, the egg does go bad, unfortunately. As a matter of fact, look at right here too. See this egg right here? You can see that blacked out again. You can see the actual head. Now this one has a pretty good chance of making it. This one I'm a little bit concerned about, to be honest with you, but I'll kind of keep you guys posted. If it makes it, it's again gonna be what I said, a cool science experiment to actually see the snake grow in the egg. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 eggs. I tell you what, that was a wild clutch. Back to mutant hatchling snakes. We actually had a snake that was very similar to this that actually had like this crazy enlarged heart and you can literally look at it and you could see its heart beating through its skin. That was definitely creepy. So I'm taking a closer look at this snake and the deformity and you can literally see its heart is on the outside. I have no idea what's going on in here, but you can see its heart is beating outside its body right now. I would think we're gonna take a closer look and get this out of the egg. Unfortunately, this one's probably not gonna make it, that's for sure. So let's go ahead and see what's inside this egg, and, uh, and wow, this thing is crazy. So I gotta be honest, we have no choice but to investigate what in the world is going on in here. What mess are we about to find in this egg? Oh. I, in all my years, have never seen a heart beating outside of a snake before. And what, it, there's such a mess in here. It's hard to even know what the snake is. I mean, we see this big old mass of yolk right here where it didn't absorb. And then you see kind of a pattern. It definitely looks like right here, you can see it's a pinstripe and over here. And then this is where the inside goes out right here where the heart is actually beating. And then I can't even tell if it has a head or where its head actually is. I have no idea what is going on in that mess right there. In all my years, I've never seen anything this severe for sure. I mean. It, I feel terrible for this little thing. I mean, it's lived this long and obviously is still alive beating like this. And obviously, we'll have to definitely call the vet up and see if we can get this humanely euthanized pretty quick because it can't be doing well right now, right? So, wow, that is crazy. And you can see these little stripes right here. 
I don't even know what that is. I'm not sure like what part of the body it is. I don't, I can't even, I can't make anything out. This is the craziest thing ever. So I tell it, like I said, we're definitely gonna do what's right for this animal. Uh, it's been weird. I've never, I, oh, that is crazy wild, but uh, definitely, uh, definitely a tragedy. I mean, listen, I hate to produce animals that are like this, but this is just kind of reality, people. I'm taking you guys on the journey, always ups and downs and goods and bads and seeing things that we've never seen before. Listen, out of the thousands of babies that we hatch, there's only a couple of these like this. So it's not like it's a big thing, but it does happen in nature all around. So uh, we're gonna go ahead, take care of this animal, and uh, wow, this has just been crazy. What? Guys. Oh no. What up, what up, what is that? Oh, my oh, black waffle! Oh no! Waffle. Did you Dude, guys hear what this is about? I just seen the Instagram oh, story. I didn't see yeah. what, what was happening. So Noah literally yeah. set our house on fire yesterday what? cooking a waffle. You put it in What do you mean? Is this the protein waffles? This is yeah. a protein waffle. Literally, Noah was, lit I was sitting in the living room and all I just hear is, Dad, fire, fire, fire! No. <laughs> Literally, the yeah. toaster was ablaze. Dude, I'm talking oh, ablaze. Oh. Flames were coming out. Of it was literally Dude, almost caught my cabinets on fire. Yeah. Two minutes longer, right. our entire house burns down. Sure. Dude, no. All for this wall. Oh, that Wait, was what? How long was it in there for? I it's don't know. Talking, that's gotta be minutes. minutes. No minutes. way, it was only 10 minutes. It was. It was. Oh, no. It's 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 10 yeah. minutes. Who? I'm talking ablaze. How big was the flame? It was touching the cabinets. It burnt the cabinets. Oh, my God. And literally, the entire house was full of smoke. I'm not talking. I'm talking like, oh, I burnt my Hours. egg smoke. I'm talking, I burnt my house down smoke. Yeah. Dude. Dude. I think about how many Hello Freshes we shot there and haven't burned <laughs> yeah. any what, what happened to the rest of it? Because that was, I ate the rest on the way here. I was so hungry. <laughs> so I was hungry. so hungry. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. So hungry. Damn, no, you better count. You should keep that forever, man, because that's like, that's good luck. You almost killed your family. Yeah, 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 yeah literally. I mean, we're this, we're minutes away from not having a BHB household. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Noah. Oh, I just, I brought that for you. It smells so bad. <laughs> There's no nothing cuter than actually hatching twin snakes. And it's something that happens relatively frequently. I mean, with the amount of animals that we produce, it's gonna definitely happen. And of course, we had this one clutch that was absolutely adorable that had two baby albino ball pythons in one egg. Egg number two. Let's see, ah, looks like we got an albino at least. Hold on one second here, guys. Hold on one second here. I could see there's one little snake right here. And there's two. These are actually twin albinos. Oh my gosh, there's actually two babies in this egg. I tell you what, it doesn't happen often to have twins and it certainly doesn't happen often that we can cut and find twins. And they're both albinos too. Sometimes you'll get albinos and normals in the same egg if there's a twin, but these are actually two albino twins. How freaking awesome is that? I can't believe we actually had twins. I mean, gosh, it's been a couple years since I've had twin ball pythons, so it's awesome. Not only do they have twins, but they have albino heifer clown twins. How cool is that? Let's go ahead, I mean, this is awesome, guys. Let's go ahead and cut the rest of this clutch and see what else we have. Maybe we'll have some more twins. Helen certainly is a hit over here at the Reptarium. For the last couple years, she's been one of the favorite snakes, especially of kids. Everyone always asks about Helen, and she really is amazing. Of course, she's pretty special, because she was born without eyes, and yes, I remember that video well when we hashed her out. Didn't know she was gonna be such a big part of things in the future, but it was still pretty awesome, and I'm so glad that she's done well. <sighs> This year didn't work out well with this clutch at all. Take a look at that guy right there. He has one good eye and one bad eye. But it didn't stop there, unfortunately. We had a couple in this clutch that came out absolutely perfect, which was really, really cool. But unfortunately, we did have a few more pretty bad animals. Take a look at this one right here. This one doesn't have any eyes at all. That's right, this one is born without eyes 100%. I know it's such a bummer. And we had one other animal in this clutch too that came out with only one eye. And as you can see, it's missing its right eye, but its left eye is fine. But back to my guys with no eyes. You may ask yourself, number one, why did something like this happen? And number two, you'd ask yourself, is it gonna be okay? Strangely enough, eyeless animals or missing animals isn't that unusual. Even in the wild caught stuff, you'll occasionally see animals that are born without eyes or at least without one eye. Sorry, did you get my flowers? I did. Do you like them? I thought yes. they look very springy, right? Like Easter colors and stuff like that? Yeah. I got some other really exciting news for you though too. Guess what I've got coming tomorrow or the next day? What? My arcade game's coming. I see Beth has got a lot of snakes going out. Bye snakes. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> so you excited? Are we gonna match? It's a two-player Pac-Man. You can play. Actually, there's 412 games. That's a lot of games. 
It's a lot of games. What, are you going to go <laughs> Pac-Man challenge? You and me first? Okay. I, I need to practice first. first. It's been a while. No, 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 no. no. I haven't done it since I was a kid. <laughs> so me and you practice. What is the bet? If Okay, listen. If I win, we get otters. No. If you win, no. we don't get otters. No. Okay, That's if, if I bad. win, we get a skunk. No. If I win, we get uh, kinkajus. If you don't stop, I'm returning the game. No. <laughs> no. I will are we done? <laughs> Okay. But we are going to do otters. <laughs> no. We're yeah. Not. Yeah. No. Look, I bought you flowers. No. I no. bought you flowers. That's this not is... how that works. <laughs> okay. You know, right here is where we cut our clutches, and egg cutting is coming again quickly. Trust me, I know you guys love it. We're not far away from our first clutch. Less than two and a half months, and we will be cutting eggs right here. That being said, certainly some pretty amazing things have happened right at this spot, including cutting some pretty stinky eggs. What is it? Oh my gosh, what does it smell like? It smells like, um, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, it's, oh, ooh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, oh, you guys interested in going out to lunch later or something like that, getting a, a good focaccia? Then back over here at BHB, we hatched out a couple really cute twin snow cow kings from one egg. I mean, you don't get as many twin colubrids, so they were absolutely adorable. Oh my gosh, guys, I literally was just looking at this clutch was hatching and I see the head pip pipping out, which is not unusual, but then I looked and there was two heads pipping out. So we have twin albino California king snakes in this egg. I'm gonna just see if I can't take a closer look and see the one's kind of coming out a little bit. And you can see the other heads pipping out now. Now the entire rest of the clutch is hatched. Every egg is hatched. So I know that these guys are ready to go so I'm gonna just really gently take a razor blade and just cut and see if we can get these guys to kind of coax them out just a little bit just so we can see two little baby albino cow kings hatching come on little guys there's one there's the other one. Oh my gosh how freaking awesome is that oh my gosh you two little cute monkeys let's just see if we can get them to come out again I'm not gonna force them out I'm just gonna kind of mess with them a little bit and if they want to come out they can if they don't want to here's the ones coming there's the one there's the one it's coming out right now and then there's still one left in the egg right here let's see if we can again just see if he wants to come out there he comes there he goes oh my gosh twin baby and ironically enough they're snow calking back to my egg cutting station here and remember we cut eggs for a number of reasons one is because we're excited to see what's inside them two it kind of helps the snakes come out and sometimes we really cut them because we can save some lives and occasionally we'll actually have an umbilical twist and if we didn't cut that egg that baby snake actually wouldn't survive let's go back to this egg here with this little umbilical twist and again i'm going to have to kind of cut into this thing a little bit more than i'd really like to and see, you can see right there where the umbilical and the yolk is like just twisted around. Again, it looks like maybe I can maybe just slowly get the thing's head through it like this, just like last time. And if I can, we can get that restriction out of there exactly like that. Beautiful absolutely what I wanted. So I was able to untwist that umbilical. We're good now. Now the rest of that yolk can be absorbed. It's not going to restrict the animal and kill it. So uh, that was actually an easy fix. Two umbilical twists this year. Both of them super simple. So again, what will this breeding season bring? I don't know, but there were some pretty cool memories of the past. So I'm expecting something crazy to happen this year. So you guys better stay tuned. As a matter of fact, if you want to stay tuned, you can subscribe over on this side right here because we are closing in on 3 million and I sure do appreciate it. Turn your post notifications on. You can actually hit a playlist over here of a bunch of egg cutting if you so choose. Up here you can actually subscribe to my podcast channel called Checking In. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.